Hey guys, this is Jennifer from the Shooter's Mindset. We are live with episode 340. And we have our co-host, Greg. How's it going? Good. You surviving this week? Uh, almost, kind of, barely. I'm not sure I am, but that's all right. We'll survive. And our guest of the hour... Our good friend Ray is here to talk a little ELR and I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Tips on staying fresh. Yeah, we'll probably talk about a lot of stuff. So we'll see. But for those that are unfamiliar with you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into shooting and then how you got into ELR. Okay, so let's talk about how I got into precision rifle because that's a little bit easier. Uh, so for one of my birthdays, I bought myself a rifle because uh, I wanted to shoot long range and I just went to the store. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I wanted a bolt action rifle, you know, and then so I was like, oh, I want one of those. Um, and I just bought a Remington 700 uh, in three weight off the shelf. And then I started shooting and I fell in love with it. Then three months later, I had a custom rifle done and I knew I had to get formal instruction. So I went and I sought out um, a class at Max Ordnance Academy in Southern California and then started competing. And that was my start of shooting. And I did a lot of PRS, NRL, um, a lot of field matches like Composition Dynamics uh, for the past, I don't know, six years. And then last year, I just got into ELR. And so, what was what, that? What made you initially want to shoot? Like, I, um, I get that question a lot, being female. Like, I think people don't think it's odd when a guy says, I really wanted to learn how to shoot PRS. But yeah, women. So like what piqued your interest? So I, I went, I got into shooting, not like the normal route where a lot of, I didn't have an instructor. I didn't have anyone to bring me in. I didn't grow up shooting whatsoever. I'm from a very liberal area. <laughs> um, my parents didn't shoot, my friends didn't shoot, um, but I was always into guns. I was, you know, like firearms. So uh, one day I went to go take a firearm safety course at my local range. And I started off there. I started off with pistols. I had like an ear 15. Um, and then I curbed that for a little bit because I was like a workaholic. And then uh, I, I went back into uh, shooting long range rifles and everything like that. But I got myself into it just because I liked it. I watched like my favorite genres are like action movies, you know, uh, T2, Terminator 2. Like, I love that. Like when they pull like that shed thing and you go down in the bunker and it's just like full of guns. I'm totally going to have that. Oh, that's, totally <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Like John Wick. Yeah. 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 We were talking about that at work. About the John Wick. Yeah. Everybody just thinks it's odd for females to be in it. So Allie, yeah, I, yeah. I'm also like going to school for being an engineer too, so it's kind of like a little bit different, you know. Uh, but a lot more women are getting into the engineering field now, so which is very, very nice. When we're getting into engineering and shooting, mm -hmm. yes, yes. When when I started my my job, it was really weird. I walked into the department. I'm like. It's a bunch of me's. It's a bunch of white redneck dudes that love big trucks and big guns. And like, you know, we, we all got along great. Um, and now our, our department is far more diverse. You know, we got, we, we have a lot of females. We have people of different races and genders and sexual orientations, and everything. And we all still get along great because we're all still engineers and have to deal with all the other Bull crap, but it, it is really cool just kind of seeing everything just kind of diversify. Yeah, yeah. So what made you want to transition? So we've shot PRS together. Yeah, we have. We shared Airbnb. We did. We had a fun time. That was a fun house. 
<laughs> that was definitely probably the most fun house I've ever stayed in on a match. The last time I'm going to blow up air mattress. <laughs> Listen, all right, y'all. Here, here's Greg, the engineer, the, the problem solver. And I'm in a house with three females. And the goal is to inflate an air mattress. So I say, okay, grab a hairdryer. Not a hairdryer in the bunch of them. We're at a shooting match. I know, but y'all ladies' hair is always on point. Y'all always smelling all good. I figured one of y'all had a hairdryer someplace. <laughs> Not that day. Not that Not day. Not a match. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care what we look like at a match. We're just there to shoot. That's why I cut, keep my uh, sunglasses on because underneath it's not so good. <laughs> that's, that's why I wear I wear hats both during the show and during matches. Hair's on point. Hair's on point. I like it. <laughs> but so that's how we knew you is from PRS. So what made? Yes. I know, like at first you kind of like were dabbling in ELR and then all of a sudden you have just blown up as Mrs. ELR and you're really doing well so what made yeah. you and how did that come about uh actually originally like be, when I was telling you guys a story about me going to the store and getting my first uh bolt gun like I really wanted a 338 Lapua like when I walked in there and I'm like I want this because I want to shoot far and I didn't know nothing about anything. I didn't know what like ballistics was. I didn't know what BC density altitude or whatever. Um, and then the guy at the counter, he's like, Ray, do you know how much bullets cost for those? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know anything about it. He's like, you should start with a 308. And I'm like, uh, I didn't want to at first, but I took his, adv his advice. You know, I've known him for a few years buying uh, guns from him. Uh, so I was glad I actually did 308 because I did start and learn all the fundamentals using a smaller caliber, you know, and that carried on into ELR, which I think was very, very beneficial that I came from like PRS and these field matches and going to or coming from Max Warren Academy because I know all the fundamentals and it's just the same when you go into ELR, you know, it's just a bigger rifle, bigger calibers, you know. Um, when I first, uh, when I took my first class at Max Ornit, uh, I called Tyler after and I was like, hi, I, I really want to hit two miles. Will you help me? And he's all like, yeah, I definitely will help you. Um, he told me what bullets to get. We were originally going to use, um, the Barrett 50 cal. So I actually still have those bullets to this day. It's, I remember it was like a Lehigh 808 grain, uh, but the five years that I was with them, we never even got to go shoot two miles. But uh, I went ahead and I borrowed a rifle from JJ Rock and I hit two miles, past two miles on my first competition and I was hooked. Oh, it was so nice. I was super excited. But in reality, like Max Warner and Tyler did train me. So they did get me to hit two miles. So thank you for that. So that's always kind of been your vision is to go long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, so I have a teammate, uh, Rusty, and I always say ELR. I'm like, this is vacation shooting. And they're like, vacation shooting? What are you talking about? I'm like, you guys get a shoot off a shooting mat. You get a blast pad. You get like easy up you get to stand in the shade you get a rocking chair if you want like it's nice you got your cooler right there you got snacks oh it's lovely and people help you to the line you get like six minutes like two three targets like it's nice it's super vacation shooting uh and then i i just felt at one stage you had somebody basically holding you up so you didn't slide didn't you yeah, yeah. So that was uh, at Raton because they made the the shooting area, the ramp, a little too steep. So it was kind of like shooting off a rooftop now. And with those rifles and it recoils, they're just going to push you down. You're just going to slide, slide, slide. So uh, we had the idea of putting a sandbag there and then somebody's just like sitting on it. So I get to just like push off that sandbag and not slide back. And it actually worked real well. 
Oh, I'm trying to remember which match it was. There was one rooftop in the PRS that we were shooting off. It was like one of my very first matches. It was probably an NBA or KM. And it was like they put like a barn mat on it to try and make it less slippery, except for when it got wet, it just turned into a water slide. Watching people every time they shot, they go <laughs> further down. <laughs> I always slide on those. Unless it has a footrest, I always slide down. There have been a lot of rooftops I'm like holding with my hand. I'm holding on to the top of the rooftop so I don't slide. Yep, yep. I remember doing that many times. Top of the comics. That one's terrible. Like I slide so bad. I always have to hold on. Do you wear the Solomon? Yes. Yeah. I still those help. But if it's like a slick roof, like no, uh, uh, was that roof roof tiles or what do you call it? Those shingles. It's then you're just gonna slide. Shingles. It's something else that he has on there. I say that particular. I, I don't remember where it was, but I remember it was like a rubber mat. So if it was dry out, it would be super super grippy. But yeah. With wet, you just have a flat surface and then the flat bottom of your shoes and then water in between. So it was. So you're saying we need cleats. Metal cleats would have been good on that. I'm sure the match directors would love us. They would. Absolutely. <laughs> They're going to make us pay for the prop. <laughs> so it's all vacation and ELR, huh? Oh, it, it's, a very, it's a lot of uh, technical things. You know, there's a lot more things, more calculations, more. It's just, you got like 10 seconds, oh, depending where the target is, <clears throat> for your bullet to get there. And so many things could happen, you know? Um, so it's, there's a different obstacle shooting ELR, but you're not, like we just, I just took him to his first, like big boy match. <laughs> we took him to <laughs> yeah, the Night Force challenge that Scott Satterley put on. Uh, so there's just like, he's like, where's the shooting mat? I'm like, just just lay down like <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the uh shooting spots you like jump down on a cactus I'm like oh I don't I don't miss this <laughs> I think now he understands when I say vacation shooting I'm like yeah you gotta pump all your gear to all these places you know and you gotta bring your own water well actually they had water there but my other competitions you have to bring your own water you bring everything if you don't bring it you ain't going to use it because you're out there by yourself. Like some math level stuff there. <laughs> Let's say pretty much every match I've ever shot has had water of some shape or form there. But um, I got to take you to a, a, a CD match one day, man. Let's go. Oh, there you should go to the one in December. It's actually pretty cool. It is. Yeah, just it's, everything's it's, cool in December. It's the winter. Uh, <laughs> If you usually you have to find all your targets, right? You you have to find them, range, engage, and then jump down, shoot. Um, but this one is a the first time they're ever going to do it. They're going to flag all the targets, um, and it's geared towards uh, an older crowd. And if you're in that super senior, uh, you can actually have like a sherpa, and they can glass for you and everything like that. So if I totally <laughs> want a sherpa. <laughs> you can have a sherpa. <laughs> That uh, was my job at the first match I ever, uh, or excuse me, I was alpaca. Uh, and then uh, they have a side match at night, and it's going to be like uh, Austin Angus, it's, uh, double A uh, targets. He's making special targets for it, where you're going to go out and you, you're going to use thermals and night vision out there uh, for the match. And I'm super excited about that. So I'm not doing the day ones, I'm doing the night match. Where, where's this at? Uh, this is at the JP Ranch in New Mexico. It's not too far of a drive. Probably only like two or three days. <laughs> fly fly into Albuquerque. That's what a lot of people do and just drive over. Can you pick me up? Yeah, I could. Sweet. Let's do it. Or fly in wherever I'm at at the time. <laughs> I don't, but I don't know where like, that will be. I'll just take a, a dice and just roll it to see where Ray's at. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at most of the time either. It's like, uh, tomorrow, uh, can I get back to you on that? <laughs> <laughs> One hard thing is uh, getting packages. Mm. 
people were like, where can I send this? I'm like, um, when are you going to send it? I will give you the dress then. I've had packages delivered to hotels a lot of the times. And surprisingly, I've never gotten a package lost doing that. I live in a house that doesn't move. Like it is concreted to the ground. You know how many packages I've had lost? <laughs> Maybe you should start sending into hotels. That might work better. <laughs> so, so where have you been so far this summer? Oh. Like, oh. oh. Um, I'm usually in at least three states a month. Uh, well, I go to Vegas. I'm in Arizona. Um, I go to New Mexico for matches to uh, Texas. Uh, and then I've recently been going to uh, Kansas. And then I passed by Oklahoma. And then I was just in Wyoming last weekend. Uh, and then Colorado. Uh, and I didn't shoot in Colorado this year yet. Uh, but I got to, since I drove, I got to visit a lot of like the companies that I haven't been able to see. Like I stopped by Mile High. I saw you at Mile High. That's awesome. Dude, their new shop is amazing. Like you know how, I went into storefront and then I went into the back. And then also upstairs, they have like a room for um, like uh, the EOTech room for whatever they they you know the dark room and they have pretty cool things up there i haven't been to their range yet but i only had a couple hours i did a visit to thunder beast i haven't posted those picture yet pictures yet and that was really cool and then i visited uh bison tactical out in boulder colorado have you guys been to boulder i have not so uh, my buddy jimmy is like ray you would like Boulder, Colorado. I'm like, no, it's too liberal for me. I can't. I just escaped from there. You know, like, no. Uh, and then I actually went over there, like, last last week. And it is gorgeous. Like, in the mountains right there, everyone, you can, you can just go hiking, like, five minutes from your house. Everything's lush and green. The shops are, like, super cute. Um, I ended up actually having a sandwich at a... Um, like a cult place <laughs> like it was called like, like yellow like, submarine or something yellow 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 daffodil something but they're all over the world very different things what's that i said daffodils and submarines are very different things <laughs> oh wait it was called yellow deli yellow deli deli is also different from daffodil <laughs> <laughs> it's like yellow something Yellow we'll something. Call it, we'll call it the yellow something. But Greg, do you ever play video games? Um, I played Tetris a lot in college. I took a geology class with a liberal instructor and it was really boring. Mm, okay, so I used to play video games, right? I, my, my games were like RPGs. And uh, I used to play like this game called Skyrim. And it's like back in the day, you go to these taverns and stuff. And when I walked into Yellow Deli, it was exactly like I was in the game. Like even the lady looked exactly like the lady that would be on the, like the video game. It was kind of neat for me. But, yeah. That's hilarious. Do you think they did it on purpose? Uh, no, I don't. I think that's just them. Like it, it was actually decorated super cute too. Like uh, I'll have to show you guys pictures. Yeah, definitely send them over. Let's uh, hit some lives real quick. We have a bunch of people just shouting out. Like we have Kevin from GSL said, hey guys. Uh, Josh said he's been listening for a while, but this is first time catching us live. I uh, hope you enjoy the, your first live experience with the mess of us. Uh, Richard Luna said, oh my God, it's Ray. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and Christina also said hi. Uh, apparently you owe Richard an autograph at some point in time. Uh, Eric Lundberg said it was great to see you and Rusty in West Virginia the other week. West Virginia? I think in Eric. Wyoming? No, no, Wyoming. Wyoming. Oh, no, Greg's confused. Greg can't read. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was my thought during this whole you have to find the targets. Like, tell me the difference. <laughs> A Y and a V is very, very difficult. 
I, and I was like, I'm like, did I go to West Virginia? I'm like, <laughs> Wyoming and West Virginia don't even like they have one thing in common. It's just the W. Listen, listen. All right, it's it's this versus this. All right, it's it's real close there with the Ys. That's a Y. Um, guys, you guys are not going to believe this, but Princess Wink said hello to everybody. And yes, I see your comments. I was letting Ray finish because that's what a gentleman does is let the lady finish speaking before he talks. And <laughs> Prentice said a bunch of other stuff. And damn it, Swanee. <laughs> what did Swanee say? Okay. That, that's just going to become a quote of the show, damn it, Swanee. He, he was talking about what my packages are. Uh, I don't want to know what your packages are, man. <laughs> but yes. All right. So that's that's that. All right. Um, so Ray, transitioning from, you know, the PRS and, you know, it's really weird calling PRS fast paced shooting. It but, is like 90 uh, seconds, 90 seconds, 10 targets. It's just like, da, 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 da. you know, it's nice. Yeah, it, it, it is fast, but th like coming from three gun, it's not like super fast. Uh, yeah, I'm not from three gun. Yeah. For precision rifle is fast. Yes, it is definitely fast for, for any sort of precision shooting. Yeah. Um, but how do the mindsets and skills that you've kind of developed over your time shooting PRS translate over to EOR? And do you feel that there's any particular things that you learned as a PRS shooter that give you an advantage over the people that have never shot PRS and are shooting EOR? Uh, I, I think it's just talking about like fundamentals, you know, and also like PRS, they train you to get down and on target with an NPA, you know, real quick, you see the target, I'm down, good, bang. So I carry that on to ELR. Okay, I see my targets, you know, I see my landmarks, and that's actually comes from field matches. Uh, and then I come down, I'm right, right on target, and I shoot. Like, I don't really fuss around that much, you know. Um, and I shoot fast for ELR, uh, but I'm just used to that. And this past match, I actually had to slow down uh, just because sometimes the ROs, they can't catch it that fast, you know? And then ELR, we also have, we have to have cameras now and sometimes the camera lags, you know? Mm. But I kind of want to just, if I, I know the wind, I'm going to send it in that same wind, you know? I ain't going to wait till it like changes direction. <laughs> Exactly. It, it, it's a, the, the wind gaming is kind of one of the one of my favorite things. Um, yeah. The last regional I shot, like I was on the long range stage, and everyone was like, "Oh, I held like three mil on that. Oh, I held this. I held that." And it was switching this, and I was like, "I went straight up all the way out." And like one of my good friends was shooting after me. Like, you want to shoot now? Get ready. Go. 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 <laughs> shoot right now. Right now. <laughs> right. Right now. Doesn't matter if your mag's loaded or not. You'll still shoot better. Yeah, yeah. And I and I also think like I've gone to enough matches and I've gotten a lot of experience from shooting like all the other matches that if I run into some issues, I can fix it. You know, like um last year, the same match I was at that I won, I zeroed. I, I just completely zeroed that that whole match. Um, and I think it was my second ELR match and uh, my, a part of my equipment <laughs> was malfunctioning, right? It was borrowed gear. It was a prototype item. So I just, yeah, okay. But I knew enough to diagnose it. Like I put a tracking drill on and I knew it was just not tracking. I brought all my tools. I always bring my tools with me. I always have like a scope level, you know, you guys are giving away fix it sticks today. I heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there, all I always bring tools, and then uh, I borrowed a scope from somebody, and I mounted that scope while people were still shooting. Um, after everyone was done that night, I zeroed, and then the next day, I freaking killed it. Like I killed it. Um, so it was it was pretty nice to be like, yeah, I ran into this issue but I also know how to fix it, you know? 
And that comes from the experience with like PRS and, you know, CD matches and stuff. Yeah, I was about to say, you, there is, in the precision world, there's no way we're, no other faster way to learn the limits of your gear and how to repair gear very quickly. Yes. As PRS. And then in everything else, it's three gun. There is no way you're going to tear up your fashion machine three gun or yeah. PRS. Yeah. Or, or like field matches too. Like I, my binos that have like the range finder that I need tumbled a few times, like, you know, fell down a cliff maybe once or twice. Well, I know some <laughs> dropped their binos on a cliff before. <laughs> so usually all the gear that I run has been field tested. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically, yeah. If you recommend some gear, you know it is very resistant to... Yes. So one thing I have stopped doing is like, I will get a piece of gear and use it and I won't say anything the first few months. I want to use it for like long term because sometimes you use it like for three months and eh, and then you use it for a year. You actually really put it through its paces and stuff like that. And then I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. I like it because of this. Um, also, sometimes when you use a new piece of gear and you're like, oh, this doesn't work. Well, you just didn't read the use manual. You just don't know how to use it correctly. Uh, so I always try to give it like a little bit and maybe like read up in it and everything like that and ask uh, experts their opinions and tips and tricks. We're supposed to read manuals? Uh. all right so one thing i am a little bit stubborn <laughs> <Not you>. oh. <laughs> and uh, i use geoblistics right i've been using it from the beginning and i really like it there's like a lot of um like comp mode it's it's amazing i like the whole setting and everything like that have you guys used it mm -hmm. like i'm all so, about it so right? I literally have been using geoballistics my entire shooting career up until like a month ago when Kestrel was really awesome and put a 50% off cert on the table. <laughs> so I got a, do you guys know what a PDM is? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, personal drag model, right? And we, we do an ELR. Um, the applied ballistics crew, they come out and they, you know, give you a PDM. So it is your personal drag model for your bullet in through your rifle. So I just grabbed the BC number, the G7, from that sheet, and I plugged it into Geoblistics. Oh, no. And at every match, I would have to, like, crunch numbers. You'll see me, like, a little, like, goblin, like, kind of, like, always doing this, you know, at a match. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just always constantly, like, truing my data. Uh, and then it works because I've done well with it. Uh, but then... I actually kind of faintly remember Brian Lipp saying something and says, this PDM doesn't work with other apps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to use applied ballistics, you know? Uh, and then so I was like, darn it, Brian, you're gonna have to, you're gonna make me learn this Kestrel thing. And I was just like, I don't wanna use it. It looks like a Nokia phone from back in the nineties. Like, <laughs> no man, like, I don't wanna do it. I want to do it. Like, I just like my screen. I go, <laughs> it's actually, I, I, it's never, light bulb never went off there, but that looks like an Nokia phone from the 90s. It, it, I had one. I had one. Me too. <laughs> and my, my mean parents said I couldn't get a new one until it broke. Like, why can't we have the screens and pretty, like, they got Snake. They had Snake back in the day too. Like, uh -huh. uh, anyways. <laughs> So I had, I went on the website and like I watched her videos and stuff like that. And I really, that the videos, you know, were great. Like Katie did a good job. I uh, wrote notes uh, and then now I use it and I practice using it and I'm pretty proficient in it. Uh, well, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, I hit the freaking what, 36.99. My favorite shot of all time was not hitting the target. It's actually the first shot on that target. I hit right off the left edge and I was so excited. I was so excited because that target is so far. And if you're that close on your first shot, oh, that's so amazing. Oh. Anyways, that's us. 
Can you tell I really like EOR? <laughs> yes. You're just a little bit excited. Yeah, a little bit excited, a little bit excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bummed I haven't gotten a, a PDM yet. The, the uh, last match I was at that I had the opportunity to I was dealing with all sorts of other issues, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can either eat dinner or go get one of those done. So hopefully, yeah. sometime this year I'll get one. But, but honestly, use I, use applied ballistics when you get the PDM, and it works. It does work. So uh, thank you, Amanda, and the whole AB crew, and Brian. Do we have any more lives? Let's see. Uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Rusty said, Ray, you're showing your age with a Nokia phone comment. <sighs> EJ said, it sure does. Those phones lasted a lifetime. Uh, Chad Heckler said he loves his PDMs, heading to the lab Friday to get one for a new rifle. Wait, you can drive to the lab? Can I send you my rifle? Chad, can I send you my rifle? <laughs> um, hey, Greg, you know what? I'll be at the castle. Oh, so my next ELR match is at a castle in Texas. Look up Greystone Castle. Greystone? Greystone Castle. It looks amazing. Can I come and be your alpaca and just hang out? I couldn't afford the castle. I couldn't afford to stay there. <laughs> <Way too expensive. laughs> I'm part of the pores. <laughs> it's a sporting club at a castle. Oh, now I want to go. Hold on, what castle? Dang you, Ray. The, the AB crew will be there so you can get your PDM. You said Greystone Castle? Greystone Castle. I think it's in Mingus, Texas. Oh, I found something in Washington. Greystone Castle Sporting Club. I feel like we should be doing a show now and not. Whoa! I told you, right? I don't know. This is how we do with Ray. We just kind of chill. Uh huh. Ooh, and and Bill Poor, he's like this world-renowned blacksmith who's part of my team too. He's making these swords for, as the trophies, like. I want one of those. I totally want one. That is bring, awesome. Bring your light gun. I think there's three spots left. Like some people dropped out, so there's three spots left. Can I shoot a GT? If you want to. <laughs> this place is awesome. Okay, where was I? We were talking about. Live questions. Oh. Uh, Rusty Newton said you look 20, but we all know different now after that Nokia comment. <laughs> I heard it from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Oy. All right. Um, so I have a question for you, Ray. Yes, sir. How do you stay smelling so fresh at matches? Oh, it is a secret. Jen, do you want to share our secret with Greg? I don't know if we can share our secret. That is like top secret formula stuff. Yeah, that's that's girl secret. You know, we can't we can't tell the boys. All right, all right, all right. I just since I like you, Greg. <laughs> the breeze. We the breeze before every award ceremony. Yes, it works and it's great. So, 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 this is what you girls do in the parking lot. <laughs> well, how, what year was that? 2018, 19? <laughs> that is so funny. It was so hot that match. We were, miserable. yes, yes. It was in Tennessee or something. Uh -huh. KM, KM, yeah. <laughs> It yeah. was humid. I was not having a good time there. I was, was not having a good time. I think like the first day, like I had like heat sickness. I had to go, I had to stop shooting and like sit in the air conditioned room. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a rough match. It was, I think that's my only time I haven't broken a scope at K&M. So there was that. We did not smell good at all at that match. And then we did Febreze and then we smelled good. That was the start of it. Yeah. yeah. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. But 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 I went up to you the next year on the way back from KM. Uh 
I, I, I beat your, your Febreze method. Stopped at a Love's, paid my $12. I took a shower of soap and water. I don't smell good at award ceremony, though. Right. <laughs> but I, I smelled good for the next seven and a half of the eight hour, seven and a half hours of the eight hour ride home. Okay. Um, Greg, you got to one up. You got to bring your hot shower with you. You know those portable hot showers, like for camping? Yeah, so after I'm done uh, renovating my master bath, um, I'm going and doing a truck overhaul, and that's going to be one of the things that's going to get added. It's not actually going to be like something I carry. It's just going to be you plug the hose into the side of the truck, and you have a hot shower. Yeah. Well, you can put like a bag on top, like the black bag, and you just oh, no, no, hang no, your you hose just, so it's you nice just and warm. plug it in, and you put the switch to on, and you have a hot water shower. I'm the pores, so... <laughs> I'm also poor. <laughs> to do it I'm, to much, but I'm an engineer, so it's going to be like fifty bucks to do this. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you Don't try. Don't blow yourself up. We were the best smelling people at the award ceremony. That is the truth. The three of us, but then we just had to like stay just by each other because then if we were around anybody else, we smelled them, and it kind of defeated the purpose because everyone pretty much stunk. <laughs> we're like, do you, do you want some spray? <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like I got Febreze before I got in the car that day. I think we did chase you down with Febreze. I'm, I'm pretty sure. It's, it's a traumatic experience. I try and block it from my mind. Like it still tastes it in my mouth. It does not taste as good as it smells. Maybe we'll get you like the woody kind of Febreze. So more man smelling. Ooh. As long as it's not like that Max Body Spray. All the guys go in the parking lot and they can just change their shirts. Like you see all these dudes taking their shirt off and airing out for a minute and then putting a shirt back on, a fresh shirt on. And we're all like, I did I change. I got this boot going on. I know. It's like, well, I did change my shirt one time at K&M. I was like, I'm wearing a sports bra. I'm just going to like look and see if nobody's looking and change my shirt real fast. And so she was like super discreet. And then all of a sudden you hear, don't look at me, I'm changing my shirt. <laughs> Literally nobody's looking, we have beer. No, that's because somebody was looking through the, the trunk was open. And I didn't oh, know that. being so a creeper? Um, do we have a giveaway? We do. Um, we are giving away a Fix It Sticks, Fix It Sticks kit. Um, hold on a second. I just picked right. another one up from Mile High when I visited them. All right. My partner was mad that I always steal his pictures. <laughs> now that, like, because I keep the fix it sticks with my PRS gear. Uh, so now I got one for my ELR gear. I was about to say, do you have a, a PRS bag and an ELR bag? Oh, we will talk about that later with my organization. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. One of each. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And so we had about 20 shares. Well, one person shared it about 20 times, but you only get one enter entry. So we're going to generate a random number, which is number 11. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. EJ is our winner. Um, shoot me a uh, a message on Facebook, and we will get you hooked up with your prize. Which kit is it? I want to see it. All right, hold on. Let me. Let me. Oh, so you didn't share your screen. I didn't. No, so we couldn't see it. Ugh. Oh, let me let me let me let me pull up the minor details. Oh, because it's still pending the uh I never hit the official go. I believe the kit is let's try to share screen again. It is the works kit. Ooh. Which is what oh, I, I saw have. that one. Oh, Dang, two hundred eighty doll hairs. What? Yeah, but That's listen, listen, y'all. This is a kit that I have, and it's like there's so much stuff in there you don't even think about it. Like I, uh, you know, I bought it because I'm all PRS, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, I got my torque limiters, and I got all the right size fits I need, and that T handle yeah. is on point. And then I was working on a uh, 
an AR over the weekend and I was like putting a, a buffer tube on. I was like, man, where's my castle nut wrench? And I was like, wait a second. I have one in my the works kit from Fix In the works, yeah. Yeah, that's a sweet kit. That's cool. Yeah. I am, uh, you know, I've had it for a couple of months now and I've still used maybe 10% of the tools on there. But like, you know, they, they have a long range kit that has everything you need, but like on here, you have like a little pistol cleaning rod here. Yeah. But you were like, oh, I'm not going to use that for PRS shooting. But it's like the perfect size to clean your chamber with. Mm, okay. So that yeah. with a uh, with a mop works awesome. Um, I've mounted, I, I built my whole, uh, I don't have the bagara out, but I built the whole bagara using it. Done all sorts of cool stuff with it. So it is a great kit. That's awesome. I'm totally jealous. Might steal it. Can uh, we enter? Is it too late to enter? It is too late to enter. But see, if you watch the show every Tuesday night here on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook channel, you'd hear when we have giveaways like this and you can enter. She's like, okay. You're <laughs> you're <laughs> I usually have class on Tuesday night. That's okay because we're also on all of the pot on all of the podcast platforms. So like if you miss mm -hmm. us live, you can catch us later on Facebook if you want to see the video. I like it. Eventually it'll get uploaded to YouTube. But like the day after, you just go to your your Apple podcast or your Spotify podcast or anything like that. You just download it and you can listen to us while you're driving. I've been doing that. Yes. <laughs> well, I've been doing two like audiobooks. I listen to lecture when I drive. Boring. Sounds so boring. So boring. Okay. <laughs> You can be called a pro shooter, but you are also a pro snacker. Yes, that's what I'm most like proficient in. I've never right? seen the spread of food as when we stayed in that Airbnb. I was like, y'all are like, you and Gina are like, um, we're going to run to the store and pick up a few things. And you came back with like two weeks worth of groceries. And that was literally like my monthly shop. She's like, I have seven different kinds of fresh strawberries, organic and not. And I have white grapes and green grapes and blue grapes and purple grapes. Uh, I think you might have been dreaming. <laughs> but yes, I am huge on snacks. Uh, my motto is don't shoot hangry or load angry. Um, and I know... <laughs> It's, it, you should live, I live by that. Uh, and if I'm hungry, I get a little bit angry and frustrated and I don't shoot well because I'm just thinking about food or um, I'll admit it, I get a little like staffy, you know, when I'm hungry. Okay, you know, that's a Wait, nice you're, 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 you're always you're angry. <laughs> so I know this about myself. So I always like keep snacks or I feed myself or when I go to a match and I see like another competitor and they're hungry, I always like provide them like, hey, here's a snack, you know, like feed yourself and like be happy. <laughs> but my newest invention, or not invention, but uh, is this thing. So when I went to Wyoming, I put snacks in a bag and I ended up like digging around for it and like things would fall out and all my snacks would get smushed, like all my like moon pies, or whatever. So now this is perfect, nice and organized and it's stable. I got little fruit cups and jellies and beef jerky and buffalo stuff. I even got Velveeta cheese, <laughs> peanut butter sandwiches, but yeah, and I can just leave this in the car and it'd be okay. It's like the vacation match, so you have like a sofa to carry your stuff, and you'd be like, "Go get my snack box. I'm hungry." Yeah, yeah. Legit question: Was that just a pack of liquid Velveeta cheese? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> Well, sometimes when you're at a match and you want to like something quick to eat and you can just go buy like pasta and just put it in the microwave with water, put some of this on and you got mac and cheese. Oh, I thought that you like, wow. You could do that too. I mean, I got pepperoni. Like, I don't know. You're making me hungry, Ray. You are so, so 
you're so much more organized. See, I, I have I have the mom bag. The mom bag. But like it's full of snacks and some of them are like two years old. Some of them are only a month old, but like I got healthy things like cheese balls. I got cheese balls. Uh, I actually use this on a daily now, like not even for matches. I'll bring it in the car with me because when you're like driving around town and you're hungry and then you're like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to get like some fast food. And, and then you gain like 30 pounds, which I did like traveling around all these matches, like, and just always stopping at a gas station and eating. And I gained a lot of weight. And then actually at that match, we were for breezing. That was the heaviest I've ever been. And then I was like, I don't like this. My body don't feel good. Uh, so I've lost 30 pounds since then and I feel a lot better you know I, was about to say, I saw you there and then I saw you at SHOT Show and I'm like who is this <laughs> I went back to my original <laughs> cheese balls one day I just like to eat too much mm -hmm. terrible 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 I was say, Ray, I watch you cook online and you like forever have pictures of the most amazing food and I still don't know how you lose weight. That's quite impressive. Portion control. You can have, I, I, I'm all about full fat, all sugar, whatever, but just eat, just like when you're satisfied, you know, don't overeat. And I think the portion sizes nowadays uh, at restaurants and stuff, it's just, just too much food. And then we have that mindset, mostly growing up in an Asian household, you better finish all your food. And now I'm like, no, I don't. I can put in a little to-go box and eat for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> that is true. So I'm sure we have a lot of PRS shooters watching that were thinking maybe they want to get into ELR. So if there is somebody wanting to get into it, like transition, like you did from PRS over to ELR, how would you recommend going about it? Like if I wanted to do it, I don't have a gun, I don't have a team. You, you don't need, oh, well, you do need a gun, um, but you can go light division, you know? Uh, right now, they're still trying to make the rules for light division, but I would say if you're 38 and under, some people say it's gotta be under 25 pounds. Uh, but you can go shoot ELR light gun with the 338 Lapua, 300 Norma, something like that. Uh, and then you can get in the game. Um, <clears throat> I was lucky enough because I knew JJ Rock uh, and I got to borrow their rifle and it's been freaking amazing. And I love that rifle. I still have it. I still borrow it. <laughs> uh, and I, the cost of shooting ELR, yeah, the round is like really expensive, but you don't shoot as much as a PRS. So in the end, you're gonna spend pretty much the same amount. Like PRS, so you, you have like 250 rounds a match, you know, with zero in practice day. Uh, in ELR, you might have like 30 to 50, depending on the match. So it's, it's affordable. I mean, if you reload. How do you get a team? Do you just show up with a gun? You don't have to have a team. Like when I went for the first time, I'd be like, hey, do you want a spot for me? I mean, I've self-spotted, you know, a few stages. I mean, but PRS, we're used to that. Yeah. Like, so there's no difference. Like I saw my splashes, you know, like I didn't get off the gun. I saw, you know, you'll see me like look at the target. Um, I know Jacqueline I, I didn't, did a lot of self-spotting. What was that? I know Jacqueline did a lot of self-spotting. Yeah, you can do self-spotting and also like people are really nice. You're, you can ask around. I'm like, hey, you know, I don't have a spotter. Would you like to spot for me? You know, and if they're busy, you can ask somebody else. It, it's just like PRS. Like if you want to borrow gear, I'm like, hey, can I, use, can I play with your new bag? Like I want to try it out. Can I borrow your spotter? <laughs> <laughs> so the cost is about the same. You just have to have the gun. Yeah. Well, and the ammo, the gun and the ammo. Uh, I use the scope off my PRS rifle. I use the same exact scope. I just have a different reticle, but I can still use the other reticle too. It's not a big deal. Um, one thing that you do need, or if you want to do like heavy gun, you would probably need a uh, elevation tool, like like either the rail or like a prism or something like that, like the, like a Charlie Tarek or, 
uh, the knife force has that little doohickey thing. So you get more elevation. So does like hand shoot farther than the other division? Yeah, light division. It just, I think it depends on the, the match. I don't shoot light division, so I'm not going to really talk about it. Um, but I would say like probably 25 is the max that they shoot out of shoot out to I didn't realize there was a difference with the yeah yeah some usually like the light division will only shoot to a certain distance and then heavy will go further and sometimes they have different targets sometimes they have the same it just depends on the match director and where you're at very cool yeah and, and ELR is fairly new it's still evolving uh, and everything like that. So, but it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, you can see by my videos, I love it. Yeah. I was about to say, I have shot like three shots in ELR and it was the most fun I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Like Robert Brantley bought his rifle out to arena for the precision rifle expo right after he won the King of two mile. And he's like, here's three of my bullets. I'm like, I shot, how far did I shoot? 2,400 yards. Uh, Blakely, right? Yes. That was. Man, you guys got so much mirage out there. Oh. I know. It was I like shooting, that. like, you, you know, the, the window film they put over windows so you can't see through them? They put that up in front of all the targets. Yes. I know <laughs> this for a fact because I was there in February and that's what I saw. Like, nothingness. Like, why are the targets moving like this? Yeah, so they do that at a thousand yards, and then when they get out to twenty four hundred, they're just and I'm like, mm, Georgia, I, I and think that's where the targets are. The air is liquid. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's where you guys are from, right? Isn't it? Uh huh. Right. What's the furthest you've hit something? Forty one thirty five. What is that in miles? I don't know. That's Two crazy. something. That is redonkulous. Two something, yeah. Three I one. hit it. I think that one I hit on my, it was either the third or fourth round. And it was at like, the sun went down already. <laughs> it was That's hard to see. Five. What was that? It's like 2.35 miles. Nice, nice. That is redonkulous. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised, like, I was planning to build a bigger caliber for these extended distances, extreme distances. I was like, oh, my 375 shy tag, I don't think we'll have enough oomph to get out there, right? And then I was talking to Paul Phillips, um, and I've been talking to Paul Phillips, like, for years now, because I've been wanting to get into ELR, but it just never had a chance to. So I've been like picking his brain. Um, so I was tell, I was asking Paul, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna build a bigger caliber. I don't think my 375 shy tag will make it out there. And he's all like, Ray, it will make it out there. Don't worry. And I'm like, no. You know, when you're like a little kid and you're like, I just wanna be like you, dad, you're so cool. <laughs> but then I actually went out and I shot these ranges and I'm like, oh, I see my splash out there. I can do this. This is pretty consistent. Like the the thirty six ninety nine. I was just dancing around on the target, like left edge, like right edge, high, low. It was just right there. And like the target's like pretty much one arm away. That's pretty freaking accurate, man. Like cutting edge bullets are like amazing. Like I'm so in love with them. Oh my god, cutting edge bullets. You've done a commercial for them before, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you guys want to see Ray's commercial? Oh, the commercial is so funny. Hold on. Well, I'll, I'll show everybody your commercial. I should hit the play button. Inability to perform under pressure. Constant feelings of disappointment. Damaged intimate relationships. Sound familiar? Then you may be suffering from projectile dysfunction or PD. It affects millions of 22 long rifle shooters all over the world. 
the negative effects of PD can ripple through every aspect of your life because of the one thing it hurts the most, your pride. You know there's a problem, but there just doesn't seem to be a solution. It's as if you have all the right equipment, but you don't have the loads to match it. Countless nights away from bed, slowly coming to the realization that maybe it takes more than a spotter to hit the right spot. Wonder if projectile dysfunction is going to be something you have to live with for the rest of your life. Well, now there's hope. Leave your days of PD behind you and discover new Curex by cutting edge bullets. These solid copper lathe turned bullets are specifically designed for use in 22 long rifles. In clinical trials, the Curex was shown to eliminate 99.9% .9 of all projectile dysfunction symptoms. Patients experience an increase in ability to maintain projection, decrease in time taken to reload, strong showings, and better consistency in overall length. Side effects may include increased excitability, night sweats, premature speculations, changes in ego, increased aspirations, and heart palpitations. Do not use in conjunction with any other manufacturer component as an advert a negative reaction may occur. Get the Curex by cutting edge bullets <laughs> and live your life PD free. <laughs> That's hilarious. All of a sudden, you're really hard to hear. Yeah, Dad. your volume is low. Testing one, two, three. And I cannot hear you. I mean, I can if I strain really hard, but I'm getting old, so don't make me strain. Did you unplug your mic or something? No, can, is it still not working right? No, it, it's not. Say something. While he's messing around, Ray, we were going to talk about organization because you're one of the most organized shooters out there. You like have everything just like packed away. Like I need to because you're like is... coffins. Pull it out. <laughs> well, my life is like crazy super disorganized because I'm kind of like I float kind of like a feather you know and I really don't know where I'm going to be at next week so I need to be organized uh like I have like a go bag where you know it has like oh here here's a tip if you travel a lot always have different sets like you have your toothbrush and your you know toiletries at home leave those at home and then buy another set. It doesn't cost that much money for your travel bag. So you don't, like when you go, you're like, oh, I totally forgot this. I totally forgot that. It's always in there. And when I, you know, pack for a match and I come back from a match and all my dirty shooting clothes that I only wear at matches, I wash it and I put it back into that luggage. So the next time I go, I just pull it out, done. You know, more efficient that way. That's a good uh, I do that with my toiletries. I have... A separate toothbrush, hairbrush. Yeah. Stuff and so that also, yeah. What were you saying, Jen? That's all I do is grab it. I have all that there and then I can just grab it and go. And then when I come home, I don't have to dig through the car and find it to go in and take a shower. I can just leave everything in the car, go shower and deal with it tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I like I like things organized. Um, it's more efficient because when I used to share a redo loading room, I would spend like about an hour finding one tool and you're just running around. And then at that point, I was like, I'm getting my own reloading room. And now it's my ultimatum. It's like, hi, how are you? I'm having my re own reloading room. So, you know, if you don't like that, we're not going to date. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Huh? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. 
Okay, cool. I switched mics. I don't know. I turned my mic around for that, that last thing and something fucking went wrong with it. How do you organize your PRS and ELR, your gear? I mean, I know your clothes and your toiletries. How do you, do you have separate every, you said you have a fix it stick for each? Yeah. So I usually have three sets of things. One for my reloading room, one for my PRS bag, and one for my ELR. And my PRS like kind of bounces back and forth with my field snatch stuff because those are very like close you know, so I'll just use the same path uh, for PRS as I do field matches. Uh, just like, you know, a few different things that I change out. Like I'll wear a chest rig, depending on what match it is. Uh, I got me to get my binos that, you know, uh, the laser range finder. But ELR, I don't need to carry a backpack. Like the firing line and where your car is, is right there. And you can go back to your car as much as you want. So I have this like duffel bag from Refactor Tactical. Um, that's pretty cool. It has like, all my tools and everything in there. And then I have uh, like one my rifle case and just, you know, a few bags, different bags and everything for that. But everything's separate. I don't mix the two because if you mix the two, you're going to forget one and the other and you're not going to be happy when you go to a match, like a PRS match. You're like, well, where's my game changer? Dang it. <laughs> Yeah. And it's not, it is like you're so used to using your own gear when you like, use somebody else's gear, it just throws you off that teeny tiny bit. And like those 90 second like stages, you're like every second counts. Yeah, it was, it was tough for me when I was transitioning over, um, you know, because I first picked this up as a, oh yeah, this long range stuff is going to be pretty cool too. And then I just kind of went full head on into it. So it was like, oh, I'm shooting a pistol match this week. I need to take this and this and this and this and this out of my backpack and put it in my, mm -hmm. my pistol range bag. And I guess it's nice now that I'm only really doing one thing. And if I just, if I end up going to the range to shoot pistols, which I haven't done in way too long, I just kind of bring my PRS backpack with me too, because it has all the goodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I find is still an issue when I like switch back and forth, like, I'll have like a bolt gun match on Saturday and a gas gun match on Sunday. Cause then you're like, sometimes if you're shooting bolt gun first uh, or I mean gas gun after you're like shooting and you're like, you have the phantom bolt cause you're so used to it. You're like, there's no bolt or, and then you switch over to bolt gun again. You're like, oh wait, oh, I got to pull the bolt, you know? So it's just like, oh. ah, you know, switch back and forth and everything like that. Every time yeah. I pick up an AR, I Every time I pick up an AR, I grab it like this with my with my thumb on the right side of the grip, and I'm yes. like, I'm supposed to be able to hold this one handed. Why? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I'm so naturally so trained to have that thumb over there, and then when I shoot a regular, I'm like, oh wait, hold on, uh, I'm running and gunning. I can't do it like that. Uh -huh. yeah. But when I shoot precision AR, like the you know like the regular matches with like AR-10 or whatever, I, I still hold it on that side. Yeah, and for, for that, it works. For, for like literal running gun, not so much. Yeah, not so much. You'll drop your gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more um, <clears throat> what upcoming matches, projects, and goals do you have for yourself? <sighs> well, I got that castle match that coming up. And the king of the two mile has been one of my bucket list matches to go to. Uh, it is, I have to apply. I haven't applied yet, uh, but I'm super excited to go. Uh, I was supposed to go last year, but then, uh, you know, there was some issues with the, everything shut down. Mm. Uh, yeah, last year was a little hinky on all the matches like all my matches that I signed up for like changed dates and got canceled and I was just like what's going on and like right now like I can't even get bullets for PRS so I'm like you got any burgers no okay you got to eat it and so I just shot a tips for the first time and I'm like I'm just gonna make a low for it I hope it runs well I mean it did you know so I just didn't want to buy it because they're they're really pricey yeah they are <laughs> 
I mean, they're great bullets, but they're it's it's not like you know, oh yeah, you know, I'm paying five dollars more per box. No, that's like a lot of money, but they are. It's like double. You're like, oh, it kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gonna come hang out with us in Georgia at PRS Expo? I want to. What what month is that? I should know this because I was talking to Phil earlier today. Um, yeah. So. Uh, um, December? What what's what what's what do they say now? Let me let me circle back to this one. Is it August? Is it in August? I don't think it's August. I think it's later than that. Yeah, they, they moved they moved it out. I don't think they okay. would be in August in Blake. October. Yeah. October 30th through 31st. Oh, that's right. It's Halloween. Yes. Yeah. I wonder who's gonna be free candy. This will be my second Halloween in a row in Blakely if it is the case. Last Halloween, I met directed The Guardian in Arizona oh, with Tyler. Awesome. Yeah. Was that? was that fun? That was super cute. I love their like mission, you know, to help like orphan kids find forever homes. Like, like what? Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Um, Paul, we all look up Guardian Long Range. <laughs> it, is, it is awesome. I've yet to shoot one, but it, it's going to happen. Um, Paul, so what the advantages of the 416 are over the 375? Uh, people say they can see splash more. Um, I don't shoot a 416. So I can say stuff about the 375 because that's what I have experience on. And the pros of having a 375 is, okay, so this is something good for ELR. Fine, good component. That's very, very, very important. Because if you don't have good components, your loading is going to be off. Everything's going to be off. You're not going to be consistent. You're going to have to put a lot more work in it. You're going to have the next turn. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to wait short. Like, who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. No. So the 375 Shy Cat, and I get my brass from Peterson. I get my bullets from Cutting Edge. And I get my H50 from people randomly through. <laughs> 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 I picked up H50 in random places in different states of people's personal stashes. Now, like, there's there's uh, a more availability, so I, I do have, like, some eight-pound jugs, but before it was like, I got three and a half pounds of this, I got two and a half pounds of that. I'm like, I will buy that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's the point we're getting to nowadays, is it's like, you know, someone's like, oh, yeah, you know, I switched from Bargain to whatever, and, you know, I got yeah. one point one two pounds left, like, I'll, I got you. Yeah, it was just like, like I was going to Blakely and I, I picked up some powder from Texas because I didn't have any and it ended up being a lot faster than my powder that I normally use. So I had to like load develop at the match again, which I said I wouldn't do, but I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> and then I was like oh I'm just going to pick up the scale I have at home like you know those Frankfurt Arsenal like precision scales mm -hmm. but they didn't have any more everyone's buying up all the reloading gear so I bought this cheap $30 scale it did not work so well <laughs> uh, luckily Ronald like saw me and I asked him and he's like oh I'll have my wife bring you the you know Frankfurt Arsenal one that I have at home and I load with that and Thank you, Ronald. It's amazing the people in the sport, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, like people are super nice. And if you're in need, people always are like, oh, I got this, I got that. Let me help you out with this. You know, like I, I also pay back too. Like there was a gentleman in Colorado who needed bullets and I knew someone who had bullets. So I actually drove up and dropped off those bullets in Colorado Springs on my way up to the Night Force match, you know? I've bought powder before and you you know I'm just gonna stop talking right now. <laughs> International arms trafficker. <laughs> uh, How's the weather? 
Jed wants to know if you're going to P TPRC in September. TPRC uh, in September. What, uh, you know what? King of Two Miles in September. And that's like my number one. So if it's not during that time, of course I'll go. I love Regina's matches. Like I, like I care for them because then she makes them short friendly. <laughs> short friendly, wrong handed friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job at those matches. What do you say? She does a great job at those matches. Yeah, yeah. She puts a lot of time and effort into them and it shows. And that's why I always want to go and support that. Yes. One, one day I can make it out of it. Plus, they have the greatest match shirts ever. Yes, the excuses. <sighs> yes. I love those. Me too. And she's like a really, really good friend. So like, you know, when she has extra match shirts, she gave me one. And like, it's like my favorite shirt. Ever, not gonna lie. Do we have any more lives? We do not. Well, then I think we can wind down to shout outs. We usually start with Greg. Yes, we do. Um, so for... Where'd it go? Where'd my computer go? Okay, we're back. Um, for my shout outs, I have GSL suppressors over here. They make my teeny tiny little pew like super quiet and they're super awesome. Um, shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta are local indoor and outdoor ranges. Um, they also were like really good at selling stuff. They got a whole bunch of Shooters World powder. They got some uh, bullets for your pistolas and stuff, like tens of thousands of them um they just posted today they had some 223 in stock so all sorts of awesome stuff pdc custom the uh most beautiful rifle chassis known to man they're available in the beautiful lime green or normal human colors um shooters world for powder um that's still what's feet of my gt keeping it super consistent um still still easier to find than some of those other brands out there um hunters hd gold I am legitimately blind as a bat and I can actually see stuff when I wear their glasses. So I absolutely love them. It's much easier to hit the targets when you shoot them. Um, Fix It Six, of course, my new my new favorite match tools. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more with them, um, kind of coming up with some new ideas and obviously fixing a bunch of stuff with them. And Bortec to clean your rifles when they get all nasty and stuff like this one that needs to be cleaned really bad. Good times. How about you, Ray? What you got? Oh, I love everybody. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I have great companies that support me, and I really appreciate it. But I'm not going to say anything about them. I want to give a shout out to, I mean, they are a part of this too, my shout out. I want to give a shout out to all the companies who support these matches and put prizes on the table. Like we really appreciate it. Like I love the stuff that I get off the prize table. I use it on a daily, like I picked up a duffel bag like at Steel Safari and I've been using it for the past like two weeks. And I, it's amazing. Uh, I picked up one of those uh, loading blocks from Henderson Precision and it's red and it's beautiful. It's and I'll, ah, super fancy. Uh, I picked up, hmm, uh, is it uh, Washington benchmark? Benchmark? Benchmark barrel? Oh no, Krieger. I picked up a Krieger certificate from like, like benchmark is knives. The <laughs> Georgia. Like I picked up knives. I love knives. I like like random stuff that's on the prize table. I heard like in K and M they have diamonds. Like whoa, like diamonds. Oh, 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 right there, right there. Oh, thank God, you got some diamonds. Oh, Genesis diamonds. <laughs> like, Call is always throws theirs, you know, like RRS, you know, it's all these companies, Vortex. I've seen Vortex a lot, you know. Uh, just thank you. I appreciate it. We that, all appreciate it. <laughs> that is 100% the truth. Like, I literally built what I started shooting with off of the prize tables. You know, I, yeah. I had uh -huh. a couple of nice friends that let me borrow some borrow some nice stuff. But like my first season of competing, it was like, oh, I've been asking somebody what the wind is. Let me buy, let me grab this 
this geoballistics wind meter. Speed yeah. Speed. Yeah, I'm building a, an AR, like, but I've been collecting pieces for like six years. I'm like, I'll like get like a handguard here, receiver here, like a buttstock here, and like this rifle is almost finished. I just need a barrel <laughs> to fit on it, but I think that's like the last piece. And I'm going to love it because it's just like memories, like, oh, I remember this match I got this at. I remember this match. So I don't know. I would never sell it. I think it's. It's, that is it's like my scrapbook. Awesome. <laughs> that is cool when you can piece one together. I agree. Those companies are really what keep the sport going because, yeah. I mean, as much as there's arguments about prize tables, I mean, people, oh. shooters do come for prize tables, oh. prize tables sometimes because they're putting a lot of money into it. So they want some return on it. So um, without that, without them, there would not be you know, near the participation. So the companies are very good to support the matches and keep them going. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to thank you, Ray, for coming and spending like, what, two hours with us on your uh, Tuesday night. I know you are very busy. You're like a little mm -hmm. nomad that's traveling all over the place and finishing school up and you got a lot going, girl. It's good. It's yeah. fun. It was good to chat with you and talk a little ELR. That's not something we do a whole lot of talking about. So it was good cool yeah. about it. So we appreciate you coming on and doing that. And that will be a wrap at episode 340. And we'll see y'all next week.